Welcome to Haunt Tech Tips, the source for technical advice to take your haunted attraction to the next level. Here's your host, Chris Gay. Welcome back, everyone. A Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and belated, terrifying Krampus Knocked to all of you. For those of you with Christmas or holiday themed haunts or Krampus themed events, hope those are going great. We've probably wrapped up at this point, but if you're still running, power to you. Hope you have a great weekend with that. Our haunt had a decent season. Uh, long story short, we got hit by a nor'easter on the second weekend. It's a fire department charity show, and we're only open two weekends. We thought about extend, expanding to three this year. We didn't. We really should have in hindsight. But a nor'easter, long story short, is a coastal storm, two to... F- 10 inches of rain and coastal winds, so 20, 30, 40, 50 mile an hour winds being an outdoor haunt. Obviously, it not only would have just been horrible to be out there, but it was not safe at that point. Tree branches and all coming down. The haunt held together, no substantial or really any damage at all. A couple things knocked over, but that's to be expected in tropical force winds. The problem was we lost our second Friday night, which is historically our busiest night of the year. And we were open the Saturday night. We laid down about five bales worth of hay on the trail. However, people assumed we were going to be closed because, well, they didn't think we would have been able to lay down hay and clean up everything. So this year, we'll definitely be looking into rain insurance, that possibly expanding into a third weekend. But still, we had a great show. Great reviews from the first weekend. We still had fun on Thursday and Saturday of the second weekend, even though the crowds were a little thinner with the storm. But we did what we could. We had some very good reception to our first room this year. It was an escape room. It was just a little three-minute escape room explaining the rules of the haunt. And then set up the story and had a puzzle. We were using a gatekeeper computer password puzzle from Fright Props. Basically, it's a little Raspberry Pi, I think it was. A Windows computer, a Windows-based looking computer. And it ran a two-stage password. There was video that played on a separate screen. Gave you all the hints you needed to enter the password. Disable the security system at the healthcare facility where things are going awry. And if they were able to disable it in time, a old Sinister Controls air cannon underneath the table, they were actually at the keyboard, would fire. And it scared the crap out of everybody. It was great. We had, as well as that, there was a thousand watt subwoofer cranking Grave Gear audio. Uh, one of their tracks, I can't remember which track, but they have some fantastic ambient tracks where it's not exactly music, but it still has a musical quality to it, if that makes sense. So it's not your typical Midnight Syndicate where it's outright music but still just sets that mood. It's kind of like more of a horror movie soundtrack, and they have various different ones. Again, that's uh, Grave Gear Studios, and that was uh, fantastic. We had a couple people tap out from anxiety just due to the extreme, anxious bass noise going on. So check them out, definitely. Thankfully, this year we added Zombie Paintball, just a firing range with the zombie uh, mask from... Outlaw Haunt Productions, who is a haunt vendor we met at Transworld, based out of Night of Terror in Malachi Hill, New Jersey. They make some great zombie masks that go over a paintball mask. Padded up our guys, and they were just going back and forth taking paintballs like troopers. We did give them a zombie response team shield, so they weren't taking all the hits, especially not the uh, the down low shots, so that worked out pretty well. The t-shirt sales this year also helped us out. We pretty much broke even. Wish we made a profit, but since we are a nonprofit fire department, we also want to do it just for the PR for the community, give the kids something cool, fun, and safe to do. So even though we didn't uh, make a huge amount of money this year, we broke even, and a lot of goodwill to the community, a lot of huge, awesome feedback. A couple Facebook reviews saying they had a better time at our haunt than Eastern State Penitentiary, which... I love Eastern State. Gorgeous place. The lines around Halloween do get crazy, but that's to be expected at any massive, amazing haunt in a city. 
but hearing those reviews, I don't think that people knew how much that meant to us. So if that was you, thank you so very much. Uh, being compared to such a well-established show is just flattering. So beyond The Haunt, it has been a while since we've had an episode. The reason for that, November 3rd, the weekend after our show closed, I was involved in a haunted wedding as the groom. Erica is my new wife, and we had the wedding at the haunt. It's a fire hall, seats 160-some people. Uh, if you've been watching our vlog on YouTube, you have actually saw some of the renovations that went on there. But the venue turned out beautiful. We decorated it like crazy, and the ceremony was amazing. Basically, we didn't really have a Halloween-themed wedding as much as we had a huge Halloween party with the wedding at it. We had a fortune teller that was one of our haunt actors, or actresses rather. She did a great job doing tarot readings back in the corner with a Halloween tarot set. We had Father Evil of FatherEvil.com. He is a local but very soon to be national character. He does haunt work. He does commercials. He's huge on the monster mania and horror convention circuits. He'll be at HauntCon in January, and he does a fantastic wedding ceremony, believe it or not. Very short and to the point, somewhat traditional. However, before and after the ceremony, watching him work the crowd was just amazing. Uh, he even has a music system hidden within his robes, so you hear just this ethereal, classical church music coming from the guy as he walks around. But this is named Father Evil, it suggests. Not your typical uh, father, but he did a great ceremony for us. There's some video that we're still working on editing together. That'll be up on the YouTube in a bit, but not your typical wedding vlog. After uh, the ceremony was complete, She-Wolf Dana Kane and the Mighty Incisors were our entertainment. You might have most likely have heard of the Young Werewolves. They were on HauntCast more than a few times. A horror rock band based out of Philadelphia. Dana Kane was the lead singer from there. That band unfortunately dissolved, but has risen as She-Wolf Dana Kane and the Mighty Incisors. You can check out their music at She-Wolf Dana Kane and the Mighty Incisors dot bandcamp dot com. They call it a Howlin' Hop. It's basically a little bit of psycho pop, rock and roll, a Billy, but still horror theme music, just fun, upbeat. So it's Halloween y, it's horror, it's rock, but it's still suitable for all audiences. It was kind of fun watching uh, the dancing taking place, uh, everybody from young and old. That was uh, pretty much it for the wedding. We had a great time there. Our honeymoon was the Legendary Haunt Tour presented by Netherworld and Transworld Trade Shows. That was out in Salt Lake City at Nightmare on the 13th and Fear Factory. Two very cool haunts. Fear Factory is a old cement factory or facility. You go from underground inside the factory to at least 60 some foot in the air, back and forth. Really cool building. And they accentuate it perfectly. There's some things built out within the building, but a lot of the haunt uses the building and its awesomeness. A lot like Eastern State Penitentiary for you East Coasters. They accentuate what they have, and it's just an awesome show. Nightmare on 13th, on the other hand, is a warehouse show and tons of awesome visuals. Once you get inside, you never know you're in a warehouse. You, basically, if you look up, there's always a ceiling somewhere not just open rafters, so that was very cool as well. The two shows complemented each other very well. They were surprisingly close to each other to be two national-level haunts in the same city, but they both... You could do one and the other in the same night, or in our case, two nights in a row, and not feel like there was any repetition between the two. So very, very awesome Legendary Haunt Tour. I heard there were a couple fewer things on the tour than there have been in the past, but we were still very happy with it, and the two haunts, by the time you saw the haunt, talked with the owners, and then did behind the scenes, it was a full night each time. And the uh, dinners, they were decent. Uh, felt a little rushed, but then again, we've got a lot to do in a night, so maybe in future years they can spread things out a little more, but we still had a great time. 
Plus, uh, Salt Lake City is just gorgeous. If you've never been out there from the Winter Olympics when they had them there, there's a lot of remnants of that and fire pits along the street, gas-fed fire pits on tables with benches around it just in the middle of an outdoor mall. Really cool. We're now back on track to hopefully get the podcast back on the air at least once a month, hopefully more often than that. As haunters, you all know, we get a little busy that time of the year. We've also been trying to keep up with our YouTube channel and the 100 Days of Terror. There's a ton of video I still have to edit and post there. Once we got closer to Halloween, I was still filming and carrying the camera around, but I had no time at all to do much beyond just offloading it so the camera wouldn't be full. And we're playing around with doing some upgrades there as well upgraded the computer and we should be able to move to 4k video shortly the 2.7k definitely is an improvement over the 1080 but for everyone going to 4k tvs well we want to support that and get some of the best video we can of haunts and our own haunt build process so on and so forth new this month haunt tech tips is now being supported by audible i'm sure you've heard many podcasts also doing the same they have a free trial if you go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash haunt tech tips and using that link you can sign up for a free membership for 30 days with one free audiobook and two audible originals which are free short stories that are original from audible obviously after the trial you get one audiobook and two audible originals each month for $14.95 although you can cancel that at any time if you do this it'll help support us a little bit And I would strongly recommend, if you do this, checking out Scream, The Chilling Adventures in the Science of Fear by Dr. Margie Kerr. Really cool audio book and print book as well. I've had the pleasure of meeting Margie Kerr at a couple different events, uh, both at her haunt that she used to work at, Scare House in Pittsburgh, PA, as well as talking with her in length at the National Haunters Convention in Atlantic City, New Jersey last year. She is a sociologist obviously worked at scare house and used the science of fear there to survey people study through i believe it was a fmri i might be incorrect on that uh but long story short studying how fear works why we enjoy it what it does to the body why people seek fear and really gives you an eye-opening look at haunts Fear events, be it skydiving or leaning off of a 116-story tower, extreme haunts, so on and so forth. And she just gives you a scientific look at it. It might give you a few inspirations for your haunt. How and why people are scared is definitely a great thing to think about while designing scares and scenes. So again, www.audible.com forward slash haunt tech tips. And definitely check out Scream, The Chilling Adventures of the Science and Fear. Moving on to the topic of this month, we're a little last minute on this one. Kind of a holiday shopping guide for haunters. Now, most of the things here are from Amazon, just because there's still time to get your things from Amazon. Uh, A few other things I have recommended, uh, Home Depot or the like. I'll start out with something I recently picked up here uh, for the techie or really anybody that uh, tears apart electronics or devices. There's a company, iFixit, and they design toolkits, specifically the one I have, the ProTec toolkit that comes with a magnetic mat, for taking things apart. These kits have spudgers and prying devices and a German-engineered and fantastically well manufactured screwdriver kit with 60 some bits every tip you can imagine and this basically includes the security bits pinlope bits triangular bits square bits even your phillips in every size you can imagine and these kits are awesome they're a little bit pricey uh they come in at 69.99 but right before christmas they have a coupon code fixmas12 for 12 dollars off of that can't guarantee you'll get this one in time but if you do have a techie person or if you are a tinkerer i cannot recommend this toolkit enough it 
stays in my truck, so I always have it wherever I am. And I've taken apart everything from phones to computers to LED hot lights using this kit. And so far, it has been fantastic. Plus, they have a lifetime warranty on the components. So if you break it, oh, you already bought it, you get a new one. It's fantastic. Another thing to look at on Amazon, there's a lot of options here. Uh, soldering kits. My personal kit came from Radio Shack before they closed. And unfortunately, they don't carry it on RadioShack.com. But soldering irons have come a long way in the past few years. Whereas it used to be, you know, your pin, you plug it in, you wait 15 minutes for it to warm up. Now these soldering irons, the pencils, have microcontrollers built into them. You can set a temperature on a digital gauge on the side of it, and it will get there in a minute, maybe two minutes. And it actually gives you a live temperature readout of the exact temperature of the iron. This is huge for anybody that really does much soldering plus it's just so much faster so much of a time savings i don't have a specific recommendation here because i don't have one of these newer irons however if you look around on amazon they're 30 40 maybe 50 dollars i do recommend one that comes with a brass wire cleaner or getting a separate brass wire cleaner uh, long story short, you'll see a lot of the kits come with a sponge and iron holder. The problem with the sponge is it needs to be wet. And I, I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean, yes, it does work great at cleaning the iron, but it's just not convenient because you always have to seek out water to use your iron. Uh, whereas the brass wire is good to go whenever, wherever. So I recommend soldering as many things as you can. It will always beat out a mechanical wire connector for connectivity not that difficult there's plenty of videos out on youtube i might even do one of my own uh sooner than later but i want to upgrade my iron before i do so as any haunter knows power drills are a key element if you do any level of haunt building from props to flaps to walls so on and so forth personally i've been using dewalt tools I also have some Ryobi tools, but I cannot recommend a DeWalt driver enough. Now, you might not be able to do everything you want with just a driver, so the drill driver kits are hard to beat. 20 volt is the way to go for haunters, because we do a lot of building in a short period of time, and chasing around 12 or 18 volt batteries, it's just not worth it. Go 20 volt, the lithium ion. These kits, you can find them on Amazon for 150 where it's a couple batteries, a drill, the driver, and a charger, and a bag. And that's hard to beat. Sometimes Home Depot and Lowe's will have sales, which will beat that price, but the normal advertised pricing seems like Amazon is the winner here. For those of you not familiar with the difference between a drill and a driver, a drill spins. A drill spins fast, or a drill spins slow with a lot of torque. A driver on the other hand, uses an impact mechanism inside that basically hammers the screw home as it's twisting it in. What you'll find is that you can drill much longer screws and a much harder wood without ever stripping a screw out just because it's hammering it home instead of trying to twist it and it's so much easier for driving screws. You can get drill bits that go on a driver not always recommended unless you're getting better drill bits because a uh, driver will snap a cheap drill bit. Again, you have to get a drill bit that has a uh, appropriate adapter on the back for the driver's quick disconnect. Another tool I used to no end this year in the haunt, Ryobi is now making a cordless hot glue gun that uses the big heavy duty construction grade glue sticks, the dual temps. I usually get my glue from Walmart. The actual Ryobi hot glue gun it's on Amazon, but don't buy it there. It's way overpriced on Amazon. Uh, at Home Depot, it runs for 30 bucks. The problem is that is a bare tool, meaning no battery, no charger. If you already have Ryobi tools and Ryobi batteries, this thing's awesome. Can't beat it. If you do not, though, you're looking at $60 for a battery and a charger, plus 30 for the tool. So if you use a lot of hot glue, or if you want to get into Ryobi tools, you're looking at $90 to get in. It's not too bad. Uh, Roby has a lot of other cool things, floodlights, uh, six battery chargers, obviously the standard tools you would expect, uh, fans, radios, all that. If you don't want to spend that much money on a hot glue gun, which totally understood, there are butane ones out there, but remember you have to keep plenty of butane gas handy. 
And there are also no-name built-in lithium-ion battery hot glue guns out there, but mileage may vary with that. Yeah, you can look around Amazon for those. Haven't used the uh, off-brand ones, so uh, no promises there. But the Ryobi definitely was very handy in the haunt this year for everything from minor repairs, gluing trading or playing cards down in a apocalypse scene, uh, even gluing the joints on pose and stay skeletons just so they stay a little better in the wind. Another awesome toolkit out there, if you've been out to any of the haunt conventions, I'm sure you've seen the Hot Wire Foam Factory booth. This is a hot knife, iron, and bow that's a little handheld bow that is used for cutting foam now keep in mind if you're going to be cutting foam either do it outdoors or in a bow ventilated area because the gases it puts off are not the most healthy thing in the world to breathe and be careful because hot wire foam factory just like a hot glue gun is hot <laughs> should go without saying but I know I've said the phrase, ow, hot glue is hot, at least once a season, so, you know, it happens. This is a 3-in-1 kit. comes with three tools, one power supply, and a DVD. It sells for $99 on hotwirefoamfactory.com, although it also sells for $99 on Amazon, and the shipping on Amazon, at least for me, was cheaper than from hotwirefoamfactory.com, so check out your options there. Amazon should probably get it to you by the holiday. I'm not sure about foamfactory.com, but possibly. Worth giving them a call if you do want to order a kit and see if it'll arrive in time. Another very handy tool, uh, if you're a haunt techie like myself, always working on things in the dark, Anchor, the phone charger brand that has some awesome phone rechargers, has come out with a Boulder Series LC40. LED rechargeable 400 lumen flashlight. Oh, it's multi-mode, so it goes uh, dim, medium, bright. Also a couple strobe options. And it's 20 bucks. Recharges using a micro USB charger, the same type you'd use for most Android phones, at least uh, before they went USB-C. And I have one of these things. I absolutely love it because I was cooking through batteries like crazy at the haunt. Not to mention, I work nights as a firefighter and EMT, so I'm always using a flashlight. Uh, this is just a cool little pocket light, the LC40. Plenty bright to see whatever you need to see. I usually don't even use it in bright mode, and I get usually a couple weeks out of a charge on this because it's a sealed unit, huge battery inside, and just works great. Do be careful with off-brand cheap rechargeable LED flashlights out there. Uh, I have experience with, uh, it was a no-name brand again, dropped it from pocket height, and the battery inside was compromised when a thermal runaway. Stick with brands like Anchor, they make good stuff, and they do back up their warranty. Moving on from tools into tech, a couple cool things you might look at. The Monoprice Select Mini 3D Printer Version 2. It's on Amazon or Monoprice.com for $180. This is a PLA printing 3D printer, uses a hot bed, which what this means is it's an entry level printer, 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters, so smaller items. The hot bed adheres to the plastic better, so it just kind of simplifies things for you. You don't have to use adhesive and all to get the plastic to stick while it prints. And you can print pretty much anything you can imagine. If you go out on websites like Fiverr or in the maker community, you can either download for free or pay for 3D models. And this could be anything. Uh, for haunting purposes, you could print out small parts and greebles for costumes, for even makeup. Uh, per se, you need some bolts for Frankenstein, gear for steampunk, or scenic bits and greebles. A lot of potential here for printing out all those little things that we need, all those little details. Now, of course, printing in 3D is not the cheapest thing in the world. You're probably best off imagining something, having it designed or designing it yourself, printing it out, then molding it and making cast and resin or whatnot if you want to make multiples of something. But this is just a really cool way that we can make our own things and at $180, this thing is a steal. These were several hundred, if not 
thousand dollars plus just a couple years ago so really cool technology and i'm looking to pick one of these up in the new year of myself so again that's a mono price select mini 3d printer if you are the type that likes to film your haunts or go around and film other haunts when you do legendary haunt tour behind the scenes so on and so forth a couple really cool micro vlogging options out there now DJI, the drone company, just announced the Osmo Pocket a few weeks ago. It is a teensy, tiny little three-axis gimbal. And they call it the Osmo Pocket because it is literally the size of a glasses case. It's a 4K camera. I believe it does 4K 60. It's selling for $350 on Amazon. Not bad. Uh, if you try to buy a 4K camera and a gimbal separately, you're going to be spending more than that. The sound on it leaves a little bit to be desired. The low light videos I've seen so far actually look great and huge potential for this, uh, especially if you're doing haunt walkthroughs or anything like that. Just so small, so convenient. Even for vlogging, it'll just give you that extra professional look being as it is a three axis gimbal. So it takes all that shake out of the video and would just make things look fantastic. If you're the GoPro type, which the Osmo Pocket, not waterproof, not at all. Dust proof, all that. Gimbals do not like water, dust, sand, dirt. That's an issue. If you need something a little tougher, GoPro's new Hero 7 Black has what they call hyper smooth technology. So you're in 4K. And it is using a custom GoPro chip, and they say AI, which I believe it after seeing it, but it stabilizes the video electronically, and it is so good at what it does. It is amazing. I've played with one of these, and it's very similar to gimbal technology. I mean, obviously, if you're really fl running around and not keeping it and pointing in the same direction, it will wobble, but it even smooths that out. But you really, it's hard to tell the difference between the GoPro Hero 7 Black in Hyper Smooth versus something with a cheap gimbal. It's impressive technology. There's various kits out there. Uh, they're on Amazon. I think right now it has a spare battery, a charger, and possibly a mount of some sort. The offerings keep changing. Check GoPro.com as well. These are selling for $375 right now, just to bear camera, about $400 with some accessories. Now, both of these cameras need micro SD cards to record video on. Being as they're 4K cameras, you need a big storage card. I would recommend 64 gigabit cards minimum. The largest that GoPro officially supports is a 120 gigabyte, although I've heard of it working with 200s just fine. But here's the thing you need to look for now. Unfortunately, there's a new standard. It used to be, uh, you know, the A10 or Class 10 cards were the gold standard. Now, for 4K recording, you want to look for a U3 standard card. Basically, that means the card can record fast enough to keep up with the 4K video stream, which is a ton of data. The cheapest and highest rated card out there right now is a Samsung Evo U3 card, 64 gigabit, is $12 on Amazon. And that's really an insane price if you really think about the amount of video being stored on a wafer at that speed for $12, but that's where the technology is. I personally am using a combination of 64 and 128 cards. But again, I have a friend with the 200. He says it works fine. I haven't tested enough to fully recommend that one myself. But do be careful. Uh, I was doing the walkthrough of the darkness haunt at Transworld last year. And my 64 gig card filled up halfway through the haunt. So have spares if you don't go high capacity. For other filming means or picture means, drones are huge this year. There's a couple out there on the more entry-level side of things. Uh, Rise Tello is a new drone. It's powered by Intel and DJI technology. 
Kind of funny if you look at the marketing. Rise's name isn't really clearly on the box, but DJI and Intel are up front. But long story short, this is a toy, quote unquote, toy drone. Sells for $100 on Amazon. I think Walmart even has these. Takes 5 megapixel pictures, 720p video, has a 100 meter range, although I find that range to be a little uh, exaggeration. But if you do need aerial shots, although keep in mind this drone has a forward facing camera, but you can get some really cool shots of your haunt, haunt scenes, whatnot with this. The video leaves a little bit to be desired, not going to lie, but the 5 megapixel pictures, they look great. I've taken a couple already. I plan to go back out in the haunt as soon as it snows and get some really cool pictures without footprints in it, obviously. And this little drone, it has a 11 to 13 minute flight time. The batteries are cheap. You control it with your phone, so make sure you have a decent phone that will run the app so it's not just going to run away on you. And the cool thing is the drone's 81 grams, which means it's so lightweight that it is still considered a toy. So you don't have to worry about any of the FAA rules, the 107 license, any of that. So pretty cool way to take some aerial pictures. But just keep in mind it's facing forward, not down. So do some reviews on that on YouTube so you can check it out before you buy. But I'm having a blast with mine. Plus it's just fun to fly the thing. If you want to get a little more serious but still don't want to go crazy with drones, DJI has the Spark drone. And this thing has gotten cheap and fast. It is a $360 drone on Amazon, 12 megapixel pictures, 1080p video, and a range of 1.2 miles, which is huge. Now, this drone obviously is not a toy. It weighs a lot more than 81 grams. And as per FAA regulations, you have to register online when before you fly this outdoors. The registration fee is $5. No big deal. If you don't register it and something happens or you get caught, it is a, let's see, $27,000 civil fee, criminal penalties up to a quarter million or three years in jail. So spend your $5, register the drone. There's also a little caveat here. If you plan to fly this for commercial use, meaning to take video to promote your haunt, you need a Part 107 pilot license to use it for commercial use. If you're just using it recreationally, you're fine. You just need to follow standard practices, like not flying within five miles of an airport, not flying after dark, flying within line of sight, so on and so forth. I'll do an episode on drones shortly. I'm actually studying for the 107 license. But this is a little bit of a catch-22 with drones, is that for commercial use, you need to be a pilot. And yes, it's a drone license, but nonetheless, kind of risky doing it without. Again, private property and recreation versus commercial on your own property, that's your judgment call. But just saying that if you are using it commercially, you do need that license. So that's going to wrap up this month's episode we'll see you in 2019 we made an announcement our theme for next year at the ocean view trail of terror is going to be freak show we will be at HauntCon in new orleans louisiana and i'll be teaching a class on preparing for and responding to violent events at your haunt with a stop to bleed certification this will be sunday january 27th from 1 to 2 p.m and in the class, we'll be going over the specific threats at haunted attractions and just seasonal events in general face. Different concepts like run, hide, fight. Kind of a primer on if something happens at your event, how are the police and EMS going to respond? And what can you do in the meantime while you wait for police to arrive, for EMS to stage out and be cleared to come in? And really, this is life-saving stuff. And it's not necessarily even for the active shooter, which is, you know, the big buzzword that everyone's talking about. Unfortunately, in the past few years, we've heard of hayride wagons overturning stories of people being accidentally cut with knives that they thought were fake but turned out to be real. 
and a haunt in Nashville, Tennessee, or at a Monster Mania convention in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Even in Philadelphia last year at a Halloween block party when a car just plowed through a crowd. This can happen anywhere, anytime. It doesn't even have to be intentional, but being prepared for things like this can go a very long way if something ever transpires at your haunt or event. So we have a registration discount code for 10% off your VIP or normal weekend registration. That link will be on the podcast notes. Hope to see you there. We'll also be hopefully meeting up with Jonathan and Crystal from Haunt Weekly. Hope to uh, chat with Leonard Pickle a little bit, maybe get a few interviews while we're there. And it should be a great time. Also, uh, ironically enough, Father Evil will be there as well. A little bit of a New Jersey crowd headed south this year, so looking forward to it. Hope everyone, again, has a very Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and we will talk to you in 2019. Thanks for listening. Go to hauntechtips.com for show notes and more.